This video is a demonstration of my first attempt at having the AY-3-8910 chip recreate speech. In this case, I've recorded the phrase OK. The key to recreating speech in this attempt is to use pulse code modulation, or PCM, to create waveforms that approximate the complex waveforms present in speech. Now I've covered this topic of PCM in a previous video and I recommend watching that if you're unfamiliar with this mode of AY chip operation. The first step in having the AY chip recreate speech is to make a voice recording. I recorded the phrase OK both as an audio recording and also as a digitized waveform on a digital oscilloscope. The digital oscilloscope records the amplitude of the sound at a rate of around 10,000 samples per second. These values were transferred to a computer in the form of a CSV file. Given the restricted memory of the microcontroller that I'm using to control the AY chip, I reduced the total number of samples to 2,166. I also reduced the space between the O and K parts of the OK phrase. The amplitude of each of these samples is mapped to a 4-bit number, as shown here. This represents the O part of the OK sound. You may notice that the values don't actually range from 0 to 15. This is the same in the K part of the OK sound also. They're instead mapped to values of 0 to 14. This was because of time constraints. I simply plug these values in to the mapping spreadsheet I used for the sine wave analog from the previous PCM video. At this point, I simply wanted to quickly prove that I could recreate speech. These are the 4-bit values converted to hex values. These values are in an array, and these are read by the microcontroller and passed to the AY chip's amplitude registers. For those interested in the code I've used, stick around to the end of the video where I go into it in greater depth. You've waited long enough, here's the result. Okay. Okay. The output waveform shows the distinct parts of the OK sound. Okay. The waveform is concentrated in the horizontal lines that coincide with the quantized levels, which are the 14 output levels of the AY chip's 4-bit digital to analog output. Zoomed in, these discrete voltage levels are more obvious. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of the natural and synthesized voice recordings. Even though the oscilloscope timescales are different, the main sound components can be easily seen in both. The quantized nature of the synthesized voice clearly differentiates from the natural voice recording. However, these obvious differences are harder to distinguish when the recordings are examined on a spectrograph. Can you identify which one is the natural voice and which one is the recreated voice? The left side contains the natural voice recording. OK. For comparison, the digitally recreated voice again. OK. 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 The human voice contains many different frequencies, and these appear as striations on the spectrogram. It's this arrangement of frequencies that give the human voice its distinctive character. The digitally recreated voice also contains these striations. And in this spectrograph, I've identified at least five frequencies occurring simultaneously. So there you have it my first attempt at speech reproduction using the AY chip. In future attempts, I'll use the full 4-bit values okay. from 0 to 15, and I may even try using pulse width modulation as opposed to pulse curve modulation. For those interested in taking a deeper dive into the code that drives this, stick around. For this project, I'm using an Antmega328 microcontroller chip, identical to that which powers the classic Arduino Uno board. I've programmed the chip in C++, and this microcontroller interfaces directly with the AY-3-8910 chip. 
The function starts with the initialization function, which simply resets the AY chip's registers. Then I set all of the bits in the enable register, register 7. The lower six bits control all of the tone and noise generators. These bits are active low, which means we need to write ones to each of the bits in order to disable them. The next step is to initialize the variable that will contain the values to be written to the amplitude registers. The value read from the data array will be read into this variable. The next part of the function is the loop. The array contains 1083 8-bit words and this loop cycles through these sequentially. In order to save memory space, each 8-bit word in the array contains two 4-bit values. The result is that we have 1083 times two 4-bit words, or 2166 4-bit words. Each 8-bit word from the array is split into two halves to retrieve each 4-bit amplitude value. First, the lower half of the 8-bit word is read, then this is transmitted simultaneously to the three amplitude registers. The output is now set to the corresponding DC level. This DC level is maintained for a short period of time. This delay changes the playback speed of the digitized recording. The upper four bits are now shifted right four times to now sit in the lower four bits of the word. The upper four bits are reset and now this four bit word is sent to the amplitude registers. After another delay, the next word is read from the array and the process is repeated. So to summarize, as each 8-bit word is read, the lower 4 bits are read and sent to the amplitude registers first, then the upper 4 bits are sent. The result is the complex waveform from which the speech is composed. And it's as simple as that. This is my first step into speech reproduction. I'll attempt to make improvements and post these improvements in future videos. In the meantime, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and have a terrific day.